Hi everybody, Jerome Ninja Casey here, and I just finished some commissions, as you saw there, and that was Deadpool and Wolverine, if you didn't know. I actually liked how they came out. They actually came out pretty good. But I have to tell you, it wasn't always that way. I jumped headfirst into anime glass painting, and I have to tell you, there is a steep learning curve that I had to endure. But so that you don't have to do the same, I have accumulated a list of things that I wish I knew before jumping into anime glass painting. Let's start with number one. First of all, everybody's go-to pen to do the line work are always Posca pens. For some reason, they think that's gonna work. It does not work, mostly because Posca pens are acrylic based, and that means water based. So if you're using acrylic paints and you're using a water based pen to make the lines, they're gonna interact with each other, which means that they're gonna blend. And what happens when you're using an acrylic paint and the also the Posca pen, which is also acrylic, is gonna start breaking down the lines, weakening them um, because Acrylic blends with acrylic. It reacts with acrylic. Your best bet is to get either an oil-based Sharpie or a Sakura <laughs> or a Sakura Identipen. Those are great because one, the Sakura Identipen is alcohol-based, so it won't mix with the, the water-based paint. Second of all, the oil-based Sharpie is oil-based and oil and water doesn't mix. So there's no interaction and mixing, so the lines will not break down. The second thing I wish I knew is that you, you don't only have to use acrylic paints. Because it was readily available to me, I started using acrylic paints. Again, I used Posca pens to make the lines. Posca pens um, led me to the paint that I mostly use, which you saw in the beginning, which is the um, Tester's enamel paints. But most people use acrylic paints because they have it readily available to them. And sure, why not? Why go out and buy new paint when you already have paint there? The enamel paint will not crack. A lot of times, if you use a thin acrylic paint, it'll crack. Or a cheap acrylic paint, it'll crack. But the enamel paint, the, the last thing that you have to worry about is it cracking. The third thing I wish I knew is about the paint being too thin. The simple fact is, if your paint is too thin or watered down, and you're using, even if you're using the Identa pen, it'll get under the line in the glass, and raise the line, and also break and smudge the paint, okay? So, what you don't want to do is have a paint that's too thin when you're doing your anime glass painting. I always do what they call a, a lean test. So, the lean test is, if the paint, if you put the paint on, a glass or a piece of glass lean it maybe 45 degrees if the paint runs down it's too thin but if the paint stays still then it's thick enough and it won't smudge or break your lines okay the fourth thing I wish I knew was that not all permanent markers can be used for anime glass painting. There are a lot of permanent markers out there that just cannot adhere to glass as well as others. So in my glass painting experience, I've only discovered two pens so far that I think work very well and I'm gonna recommend them to you. As I said before, is the Sakura Identa Pen and the Oil Base Sharpie. Those work very well for anime glass painting. Okay, the fifth thing now is glass painting or anime glass painting doesn't only have to be about anime. I've realized that you can have some epic turnouts using them to do comic book characters, uh, movie characters, just different things as long as everything has a hard line just like the anime coloring and you can use it for that. Okay, so Although it's called anime glass painting, do not limit yourself just to anime. 
Go out, find other things that you can put on that glass, make it your own, and call it something fancy like superhero glass painting. <laughs> All right? But you don't only have to use it for anime, it can be used for other genres as well, like comic books and cartoon characters or Disney characters, what have you using the same method and the same sort of uh, materials as well. Okay, so the frames you use does matter. I did a Geno's painting and I was desperate so I went to the local 99 cent store and I bought a frame uh, just so I can get the glass. But that frame to me, in my opinion, was ugly. But it was the only frame that I had for the glass. So, you know, I had to put it back in there. I really didn't like the frame. So, I did some research and um, I came up with the best frame, which is these front loader frames that I found on dickblick.com. Or you can also get them on amazon.com. I'll put link to all these things down below in the description. But the front loader frames are so beautiful because, again, they load from the front, plus they don't have the big frame around it which hides a lot of the glass art. So it's basically borderless, a borderless frame. So all the art that you do actually shows up when you put it in there as opposed to being covered by the borders of the frame. Okay, so I highly recommend those front loader frames. Um, again, I'll put a link to where you can buy those in the description below. Seventh thing I learned, this is the hardest lesson I learned, I think, <laughs> is that it's not as easy as it looks. Now, I did a, a short 60 second tutorial video about how to do anime glass painting and some of the comments um, were clearly from people who have never done it before. They thought about, oh, it's easy, anybody can trace, it's easy, oh, all you do is just uh, transfer one thing to another, this is easy, this is... It's not that easy. And I challenge anybody who thinks it's easy to give it a shot. There is a steep learning curve that will have you clenched up in a ball in the corner of your room crying asking why me trust me okay that's why i do all of these tutorial videos because a lot of people come into it wide-eyed thinking that oh this looks pretty easy but it's, it's not there's a lot of levels to doing this correctly so that your art comes out correct okay and not only correct but art comes out looking good so if you are entering this please don't enter it thinking that oh well, this is easy i'm gonna destroy it now what's gonna end up happening is that it's gonna destroy you, all right? Respect the process and you will actually do well. The eighth thing I learned is you don't only have to use one method. One, of, one method is okay if it works for you, and by method I mean the way you apply the paint. My method usually is I'll do the outline and then I start with the shadows and then maybe the secondary shadows, then the highlights, and then the midtones. okay? And that's usually how I do. Some people start with the highlights and then the shadows and then the midtones. Okay, there's no exact way to do those. Whatever works for you, works for you because Everybody has a different approach to everything and the approach that garners the best results for you is the one that you should take. It may take a little experimenting for you to find your approach, but know that there is no textbook approach. Okay, the ninth thing I wish I knew, which I actually found out after using the Testers Enamel Paints, is that the Posca pens are good with enamel paints. And I found that out because I kept using the Posca pens with acrylic paints and they kept getting destroyed. The lines just kept getting destroyed. So instead of thinking there was a problem with the pen, I thought maybe there was a problem with the paint. So I did some research and came up with the Testers enamel paints and it seemed to work really well.
The tenth thing I wish I knew is that you can also do phone cases using the same concept and technique. Now for the phone cases, I would highly recommend you use the enamel paints because of how they adhere to the plastic of the phone case. For me, they've always done um, a great job. It always comes out looking vibrant and bright. I haven't tried it with acrylic paint because acrylic paints may be a little uh, sticky. After, even after it dries, it may stick to the back of the phone or the corner of the phones. With the phone case, I like to use an acetate backing to, to secure the back so none of the paint actually comes off and sticks to the phone. The same process that you use for doing glass art can be used for making custom phone cases and maybe you know, making you a few bucks on the side as you do custom phone cases, all right? And that concludes my list of my top 10 things I wish I knew before starting anime glass painting. Hopefully this video was helpful to you. If you haven't started glass painting yet, rewind the video, look at it again, and see if you might have missed something because these are very important facts that will prevent you from getting these streaks of tears running down your face because your glass painting is not coming out the way you want it to, okay? So I endured all of this just so that you don't have to, all right? Respect the process, follow the rules, and you'll do fine. This is Draw Ninja Casey saying, I'll see you next time. Hey, that, that rhymed. <laughs> I'm such a poet and I don't know it. <laughs> Goodbye, everybody. Wah!